America and young people are hungry to go do something again. And the movie's going to be a smashing success because we get to go see people rough and tumble get out there and do it. What's up, people? So today, I want to talk about why the new Ford vs. Ferrari movie is going to be a smashing success. And I gotta keep working on my Viper. <laughs> because I got the bright idea that to celebrate 10,000 subscribers on my channel, which is very exciting, I would teach a young person to drive stick in it if they love sports cars and have been doing amazing things to better their community, nation, or world by helping others, even if they don't get a tangible return. I think that's the most important point. I don't really want to be one of those channels that just gives away free things because I want you to like me. I'd rather us just do awesome stuff and celebrate people who actually care about others. Uh, and if you do that, I'm going to care about you. Whoa, cool. And no, I'm not a communist or something. So everybody schlacks. So Ford versus Ferrari, right? Well, I already did a video a while back ago where I ticked off a lot of Ford fans by saying that the true victor of that whole rivalry was Ferrari. Let's be honest, Ferrari has been making gorgeous sports cars and race cars since forever and are still, and have like won everything and everybody loves them and they're pretty and they work really well. So congratulations Ford, you spent a lot of money. That was basically the whole uh, subject of my video, just to get people to start thinking. But this movie, the second trailer just came out. Instead of me just leaning here, how about I get some actual work done? Are you guys cool with that? Okay, well, even if you're not, I don't care, because I got stuff to do. Ugh. So you might have to listen to me making grunt noises and like, I don't know, cursing and throwing wrenches or something. So this movie, why is it gonna be a success? I will tell you! That's what I do, apparently. That's my new lot in life. I am a YouTuber. So by the way, I'm taking the drive shafts off this thing, or half shafts, because they're worn out. And um, <laughs> if a young person's gonna drive this, then having a lot of driveline lash is not going to help them. So anyway, it's going to be cultural. Because here's the deal. That movie's tapped into three different themes that I've seen in it. One, somebody will punch you square in the face. <laughs> They'll get in a fight, have a beer, and get over it afterward. We don't do that nowadays. If you look at somebody funny, they'll say a bunch of crap about you on the internet or set you up for being like, oh, you hurt my feelings. And then I'm gonna, and then they like ruin your career. Whatever happened to people having a disagreement, getting over it and moving on with their lives so everybody can do something positive together in the future. It's, uh, you know, that's something that is, that's hitting home with people nowadays. They're realizing it. It's a difficult thing. So I think when people see the trailer, and watch the movie, even if they don't realize it, that's gonna hit them hard. Like, wait a minute. What happened to the days when you could get in a disagreement with somebody? You can get something done, you can get over it, and everybody can make something positive for the future. I think that's gonna resonate with a lot of people. I think there's a lot of, of emotion there. I think I need a pry bar. So the other thing about it, which I thought was fascinating in the second trailer, was they were showing testing the 4 GT with little tufts, aerodynamic tufts on it. That's where they taped on all the strings to the GT40, and they uh, tore out a big box. Oh, it looks like I'm gonna have to get a hammer. Oh, baby. Oh, man. Where's my hammer? Oh, I guess I'll try. This one might work. Okay, so they yanked out the old rudimentary early big data acquisition box, which is their computer, that was to, uh, you know, who knows what it was doing, trying to get data, G-forces, recording, helping things to find out there's wheel spin, if you're lifting the front end at speed, blah, 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 blah. And I assume that in the movie, the can-do attitude of Carroll Shelby and his team, which basically was like every race builder, mechanic, and fabricator, and engineer back in the day, they uh, yanked that crap out of there because it was probably heavy and upsetting the balance of the car anyway. And by going and spending a dollar on some string and tape, they taped it all over the car. Because as air flows over a car, an airfoil, an airplane, motorcycle, or a ski jumper in the Olympics, if you've got lightweight tufts of string, it will follow the air. You can see if you're getting laminar airflow, if the airflow is flowing around, if it's turbulent. 
or if it's reversing. You can see all those things right now in the real world. And in especially rudimentary data acquisition, if it didn't have all of the sensors, it might not be giving you a full picture. It might just be one sensor that's going, you know, going tilting and then you go designing something and you're, you've just made a bigger mess of it. And the thing is with that, I'm excited about young people seeing today is because for the last, I don't know, 30 years, it's been crammed down everybody's throat to be completely reliant on computers. When the fact of the matter is, the best computer a young person could have to design and engineer is right here. But schools don't want to teach you how to use that. They don't even know how to use that. They just want to say, look at all these computers we have. We have the 47th generation of SOLIDWORKS and teach you how to use it, and that's how you design things. It's not how you design things. You design things in here. It's faster. And then you use a computer, a solid model, and computation of fluid dynamic surfacing, blah, blah, blah. You use those things to work it out finitely. Or if you have to communicate a design to a manufacturer to make a part, which is what they did on paper anyway. <laughs> In my entire career, even making precise things like high tolerance gears for a jet turbine engine or even a car, I personally have not had to use a computer to design something like that. I collaborate with the manufacturers that do things like that, and I'll draw it out in an engineering drawing. I could give them a drawing on a napkin that they would get if I give them the basic tolerances and what they need verbally. My point is, you design in your head. And this movie's so great because it's showing that. It's something that young people have forgotten. They, and they didn't forget it, they never knew it. The SR-71 Blackbird was designed with a damn slide ruler. Think about that. Think about when it was designed. We didn't even go to the moon yet. We're talking 1950s, early 60s. The automobile industry was garbage. <laughs> and we're doing like titanium rocket ships doing Mach 3 and going to the moon. Think about that, young people. It's exciting. It's going to be in a movie. It's rough and tumble. I got to get this stupid bolt out. Come on, Casey, you suck at life. Anyway, so. The other thing I think is going to be interesting, and I don't have a complete wraparound of exactly why I like it, but I think everybody's gonna, because the corporate aspect of this, you know, there's Ferrari, la la la, and he insults Ford of saying like, oh, well, Ford just makes ugly little cars. <laughs> well, yeah, burn, actually. Ford did make ugly little cars back then. Don't hate on me. They're not pretty. You may find them nostalgic if you were around during that time period. Oh, it's got the Mustang. Well, everybody relax. Ford made ugly cars. They just did. So, but Ferrari and Ford, the big exec, I'm so powerful, I've got lots of money and power, and I, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna tell you, Mr. Colonel Shelby, how I don't like your attitude. You're a can-do person. You're all rough and tumble. You're getting in fights and blah, blah, blah. I think I'm gonna fire you and get this panel of suits and all these people. Tell me why not. <laughs> I could have just ended the movie by saying it's like, because your suits suck and I can actually get the job done. And if you have half a damn brain to go win, then uh, I'm gonna keep going, so get over yourself. Uh, but there probably has to be some cool confrontation between some big, arrogant, stinking exec, cigar-smoking exec that wants to ride a rocket ship to the freaking bank. I don't know. So, I think it's gonna be cool. And I think America is excited about it and ready for it because we are really, really tired of the PC culture. No joke, not only the PC culture, but the victim culture. You know what I'm talking about? And no, I'm not trying to be political right now, but it's true, it's happening. Why do we not like those things? Because they keep good people from being great and knock you down. And in America, can-do people, whether you're an entrepreneur or a car guy, somebody wants to build something, and you know what? It has nothing to do with politics on which side of the fence you're on. Anybody good, anybody driven, anybody that wants to get out and make something happen for the better is getting sick of being drugged down. Not only by those two cultures, but just things in general. Corporations, red tape, you name it. America and young people are hungry to go do something again. And the movie's going to be a smashing success because we get to go see people rough and tumble get out there and do it. Because of ingenuity, drive, and a bit of grit. How good would it be if we could go do that again? If it wasn't just all billions of dollars and computers and whiny victim cultures that don't go out and do anything like that, that just want to tear everybody else down. Wouldn't it be great if we could just go out and be great again? 
So, I think they've done a pretty good job. I think the CG's okay. I think the cars represent it well. Hollywood's gotten really bad about physics and movies. They really have no idea what they're doing CG-wise. But it looks like they did a pretty good job. Pretty good job. You know, so I don't think it's going to be necessarily the best movie in the world. But I didn't think the movie Rush was going to be the best thing in the world. But oh, God, that was a good movie. So I'm going to give it a chance. And um, I don't care if, I don't really care about the story. Eh, Ford, Ferrari, you guys can go battle it out. I just like the attitude. And I like seeing people get things done old school. So, I think you guys are also gonna enjoy, enjoy that. So, what the heck? Let's go see the movie. I don't know. Maybe we should have a big get together and take over a movie theater. But in the meantime, this is me ranting while working on a car and getting dirty. Casey, I just thought you were some rich guy and you just bought all your things and you were just shiny and cool. Nope, nope, gotta work on my own cars. <sighs> Whew. I gotta get back to work. <laughs> I hope you guys will like, comment, and subscribe. See you at the movies.